So we introduced you to the newest member of the family uh, when we did, you know, the Animal Crossing cat soap thing and you got to meet Loki. And so I have someone else to introduce you to today because, you know, we don't want anyone to feel left out. So, hi. Hello. Hi, Kit Kat. Hi. What you see? Is it amazing? Yeah? Do you want to look that way? You did. Yeah, there you go. So this is Gizmo, and this is Soap and Clay Kidlet number two's kitty. And we don't actually know, huh? We don't know if you're a boy or a girl. We have no idea. This one came to us in rather strange, rescued from really weird circumstances type things. And so I'm not really sure, but Gizmo is pretty fitting, right? It's a cute name for the cat. And so, yeah, we have two cats and still have the guineas. And so we're just making this all work. And that's awesome. But this one is a super cuddle bug and super duper cute and just amazing at all the things, aren't you? Yes. And so, yeah, I definitely wanted to introduce you guys to the Kit Kat. Has nothing to do whatsoever with the video today. We're not making a cat shampoo. We are making a shampoo though, and I am giving you a recipe, and I will tell you more about the recipe and the shampoo and all of the things in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. This is Gizmo. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for day 116 of 365 days of soap. And as I said, today we're doing a recipe day and we're making shampoo bars. Now, a couple weeks ago, about a week and a half-ish ago, we did a re-update on the clays, right? Wherein I tested a lot of dry powdery additives that I had never worked with in soap before. Not necessarily clays, but still have the same sort of properties that they can impart on the soap, much like clays. So we experimented and a couple of those clays said that they were good for uh, hair, not only as a hair cleanser, but also as a natural conditioner. And I thought, what a great idea. Let's test them in shampoo. And so that's what we're doing today. Now, the recipe I'm giving you does include these clay things and we can focus more on, you know, the hows and the whys and all the things in the video. But, you know, let's get to the video and we can talk about it there. Okay, so get ready to pause and capture a recipe because this is what we're doing. All right, so this is my curly formulation. And before you come at me with, oh, yeah, 50% coconut oil, you know what? I We have had these conversations before. This whole idea of, you know, you could never use coconut oil in more than like 20% of your bar that's bullshit. And also all of the extra slow penetrating, deep conditioning, highly moisturizing oils that exist in all of that at an 8% um, super fat is going to yield a delightful bar. And the reason why I know that is because this is a recipe that I've used for shampoo bars a lot. I am just going to be also incorporating a couple additives that I have never used in a shampoo bar yet until now until I have done. So now I've done so. And I'm going to do so again. Now, the shikaki powder, we talked about that in the video a couple days ago, right? So it's really good for the hair and that's it's a natural conditioner and 
It acts a little bit like a soap nut in that it provides an extra, uh, well, it provides an extra bubble. That was a hard word for me to ha find. Thank you for that. But also, it really does help uh, clear dandruff and clears the, all kinds of things. And that's actually pretty interesting for this. And I thought that that would be a really good thing to incorporate in. It also cleanses the scalp gently, fixes the sebum level, sort of balances everything out, and can, I guess, help with hair growth. Now, Amla, we also talked about the other day. And so it's rich in vitamin C, it's rich in vitamin E, lots of good tannins, promotes healthy circulation. Oh, it looks like a 2014 study found that an herbal solution containing Amla was more effective than several over-the-counter chemical solutions at treating head lice. That's interesting. So that might be a fun thing to include into a shampoo bar recipe that would maybe just deter head lice from even existing. Now, please understand that I understand that these are not things that you can make claims about for your soaps. We've done a whole ass video, two, three whole ass videos, four, on what you can and cannot say about your soaps, how to label them, what happens when you say make these claims, i.e. it becomes a drug. So I am aware of this. This is just me having a conversation with you. So don't freak out and start disliking the video and telling me how I'm wrong in the comments because I'm already aware. I'm just letting you know what the benefits are of the shikaki, which I'm still saying wrong, and the amla powder, and why I decided to include them in these bars. So if both of these clay type things, additives, are going to be gentle cleansers and natural conditioners, with a super fat of 8%, this is why I wanted to use the coconut oil recipe for this specifically because we're going to get some extra conditioning from this but I also read that the amla powder can be a little bit difficult to fully remove from your hair and so and that's you know when you're literally making a paste out of it with water and just putting it on your hair for like a hair mask and so I thought well it might be good to incorporate that with something like a coconut oil, which is known to sort of lift away debris. And so that would help remove the residual amla powder from your hair in the shampooing. This is my thinking. So that's another reason why we're using the 50% coconut oil blend for this. Now, because this is such a simple recipe, well, shampoo bars in general, the recipe itself is not simple, um, but the actual making of something like a shampoo bar, once you've dialed in your recipe, it's easy peasy. There's not a lot going on. You mix everything up. You hit emulsion. You put in your additives. Now, the buckthorn I actually included in this as well because it is a hair softener, and this is my curly formulation, so specifically like textured hair, like uh, soap and clay kidlet number one's hair, and I wanted to include some buckthorn powder to be a nice um, well, hair softener, as well as it promotes hair growth. So that's nice. I love that. And that's just the scent that's going in for that guy. So yeah, that's a very easy peasy recipe blend for sure will make. And the recipe blend itself, it actually, it's more complicated than anything I ever like to give you because there are so many oils in it. But the thing about shampoo bars is having made a lot of them over the years and spent like three years actually formulating my initial shampoo bars and having them tested by people, um, sometimes those recipes have to get a little complicated because you're dealing with a different pH, you're dealing with a different part of the body, and you're dealing with something that people really super care about. Not that they don't care about their skin, but hair, if you have a bad hair day, that's the worst ever. So yeah, those those oils are all actually pretty important in this particular recipe. You can sub some of them out though. Now like the argan can be substituted for more olive oil or maybe an apricot kernel oil and the shea butter that can be substituted for like a mango maybe or an avocado butter would be great. 
The jojoba and the castor, I feel like you really need to keep in this for sure. There's never a good sub for castor. Just across the board, there just is not a good sub. And jojoba, also there's really not a good sub for it. So I would keep those for sure. And then maybe consider, you know, just eliminating the argan entirely and just increasing the olive oil percentage by 8% to make up the difference. That would be delightful as well. And again, the butter can be substituted for another butter. Now, this is going in the oven. See pop gel. Let's go check out the cut. Okay, now on to the cut. And the darkness that you see from this is not the scent doing weird things. This is the Amla and the Shikaki doing their thing. And so they're dark. Like, they're very, very dark. You see the ones up left that I already cut they were exposed to air for about 12 hours and they fully darkened up. And this is what they looked like inside originally. Again, that is not a scent blend. That is not an essential oil blend doing that. That is the discoloration coming from the Amla and the Shikaki together. And so for that reason, I'm not 100% sure about it because those become very dark bars. On the other hand, though, nobody's ever had a problem with using an activated charcoal bar. So like a jet black bar. And like even blonde people I know use my activated charcoal shampoo bars very, very often. So I don't know. Oh, that was another thing that the Amla is supposed to be really great for. It's supposed to be good for um, colored hair as well as reducing gray. And I don't exactly know how that magic works, how that sorcery works. But, you know, again, we're just talking. We're just talking. You can't say that your, your soaps do these things. It's just good information for you to have when you start formulating your own shampoo recipes and what you want them to potentially do or do not. Now, we do want to test the lather on these. They're very, very new. They're about 18 hours old, but you know me, I can never, never, never resist a good sh or a good soap lather test. I'm just obsessed across the board. And that's a beautiful lather. That is delightful. It has a great hand feel. It's not at all drying. It's quite delightful. No discoloration from the soap itself. And there's no discoloration in the lather. And continuing to work it, it just becomes a more delightful lather across the board. So, yeah, that, that's a winner. I am looking forward to trying this on my hair. And by the time that I film the face video, I will have done so for about three weeks. So, you know, let's go talk to me again in the, you know, face bit. And we can talk about my findings. That is day 116, a new shampoo bar. And there it is, a new shampoo bar recipe. And yeah, I like the incorporation of the clays in them. We have been testing them on all three of us. So the Soap and Clay Kidlets and myself, Mr. Soap and Clay has no hair. So he's not going to be much help. And we definitely like them. There's definitely some nice conditioner to it, but you don't feel like your hair is weighed down. So that's good. And I don't know yet how I feel about the color of the bar because it's pretty dark. And so I am interested to see the reaction that my customers have to the color of this new shampoo bar. On one hand, a lot of people are saying, well, it's a natural color. So, I mean, it's cool. It's rustic. It gives it character. On the other hand, I'm like, that's really dark. I'm concerned that it's going to stain my hair, which obviously it won't. You saw with the lather that it didn't. So, you know, there's that. But I do understand that that might be a, a consideration for customers that would ultimately purchase the bar. So we'll see. If you're interested in purchasing the bar, you can find it at soapandclay.com in the shampoo bars listings. Yes. If you're interested in seeing what other recipes we do and all the jazz, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, do the things. Help that counter move. That would be awesome. Um, for those of you who have helped that counter move, hey, you're awesome. I appreciate you oh so very much. And uh, I'm out here for today, but I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.